so once again, a chapter in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime closes. And what a fucking ride this show was. <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, we are here today to say goodbye to Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. Obviously, I'm going to try and get my standard batch of end of Yu-Gi-Oh! era videos out before well, Go Rush comes out Saturday. <laughs> And uh, we'll be subbed early next week. So, yeah. We will, uh, we'll, we'll figure something out. We'll, we'll figure this out. But yeah, no, so for now, let us just talk about the ending of what I think is probably one of the stronger Yu-Gi-Oh! shows. Like, the first few minutes was a little shaky. But then, like, when we got to where the show ends, I was kind of like, yeah. Yeah, I, I like this. I like this a lot. So let us begin uh, with the final duel is here. And it's not with Yuga and Otis. I mean, it is ultimate with Yuga and Otis. But we get this side duel of, uh, what's his face? Luke coming in to save Yuga. So Yuga doesn't sacrifice himself to uh, save rush duels or whatever the fuck's going on. And you know what? I liked this. Like, again, I've been saying it the entire time. The strength of this show is these characters. And it sort of felt like they knew they weren't going to have the strongest plot. Rather, uh, the COVID delays. I mean, they very clearly lost a lot of ep a few episodes from everything. Uh, but rather, it was due to COVID delays or anything else. They knew that they couldn't get the plot where it wanted to be. But unlike a lot of shows, Cough, Cough, Wonder Egg, Priority, where they'll just try and still keep all their plot elements and just make them all really shitty... It genuinely felt like they were like, okay, let's sacrifice plot, let that be whatever it is, and have character prevail. Because in that fucking final uh, few minutes there with Yuga and Luke, holy shit, I am so on board with everything. The actors are so good with each other, and there's this real genuine feeling of like just finality to the whole thing not feeling big and epic which you think it would because they're in fucking space and giant mecca but no just like the way the two are in front of each other the way everything isn't the usual colorful friendly look everything has kind of like this dark tint to it like the greens and the way the silvers and grays all look you genuinely feel like this is not a happy situation we're in right now and so even like the holograms aren't even there. They're literally just playing cards in front of them. It's so minimalistic, but it so keeps you in what's important. And that being the emotions of the characters. Luke is doing everything in his power to save his best friend, to bring him home so everything can be all right. But in the end, Yuga finally beats Luke. I mean, he beat Luke when he was the Luke man, but it's fine. Um, I've had kind of an issue with how often Yuga has lost in this show. Uh, just because so many times I just wanted to see him win. But, it, but like, knowing now that it's all building to that idea of Yuga finally beating Luke is in this scenario, fuck, it was worth it. Like, when he wins against Luke and just sends Luke off uh, with the Luke man to go back to everyone else, and his just reaction, like, I finally beat Luke! I finally beat Luke! It's really fucking emotional. And the way everyone's looking at it, there's no jokes in this scene. It's everyone just so sad and just watching as their friend is going to leave them and there's nothing they can do about it. It's a very strong moment. But then Yuga goes off with his giant robot to finish the duel against Otis. And you know what? I genuinely thought the idea was Yuga was going to lose but use some sort of techno bullshit to save himself. But no, Yuga wins with a trap that brings it back to the original point of the whole thing. And that is that it was only with the power of friends and that bond that he was able to do it. And I believe it. This isn't just saying the power of friendship and then have an arbitrary thing. The only way Yuga was able to win was with a card that had a very specific scenario that required the help of everyone who he had affected and who in turn affected him. And that is what allows him to defeat Otis. Um, I don't totally understand what the point to giving Luke the ID card that then turns into Seven Roads is. Maybe just Yuga thought with the way everything was going that uh, flying them up into space or whatever else was happening uh, was the only option, I think. 
But yeah, no. So then uh, he defeats Otis and sends them up flying, uh, thus destroying the Rush Duel program and sending them off into space where they presumably would die. Except this is Yu-Gi-Oh. But so then we skip two years, which that's kind of nice. I think the last time we did a time skip ending was 5Ds. There's the t like 10 year one at the beginning. And then there's also, I think, the fact that the actual final duel takes place like six months to a year later. Uh, but yeah, no, here it's two years later. And we find that rush duels have been gone again. Why can't they just duel normally? <laughs> just, just put it all on the table. <laughs> what is wrong with you idiots? But that's a, that's for another video. Don't worry, we'll get there. Uh, but yeah, no, so we see a bunch of, so we see two grown men going into what is presumably a kid's dueling area because they want to duel themselves. But again, why not just duel outside? <laughs> but yeah, like I said, plot was not the strength of this show. But yeah, no, so then right then, Evil Yuga jumps in and is threatening them and then the baseball sister just whacks him with a wiffle bat and this is where i'd like to talk about everything with evil you get the end of last episode because i think that this is very important to see the conclusion so where all that was going was ultimately that uh evil yuga or yuga go or whatever you want to call him had to make the decision himself that he wanted to better himself that he didn't want to be angry, that he wanted to do right by his siblings and move on with his life. That, in turn, was a big part of the point of Sevens, the ability to take control of yourself and to make the decisions you want to make for you, not just because you're told to. Like, a lot of people probably assumed, myself included, the final duel would be Yuga versus Yuga, and good Yuga would convince bad Yuga to be good again. But no, it was really ultimately that the siblings like had their moment where they tried to just talk to him, but ultimately he had to make the decision to be better. He wasn't forced or shown by the protagonist. And I think it's stronger that it's a conclusion he came to himself. And that's kind of the point in that finale. We see that everyone's kind of moving forward with them lives. Everyone's in middle school, which means we get Roman in schoolgirl outfit. Ah, ha, ha, fake Khalid meter. But yeah, no, and that just, I like that final bit of just seeing how everyone's kind of moving forward with their lives, seeing that two years later, everyone's still friends. We see that Mimi has got a big role in running Goha uh, and trying to reform it and make it not just about controlling people. We see that the siblings, they've a, stopped wearing those fucking masks and are trying to uh, be better people themselves. And fuck it, I, I like that. Like, yeah, Goha did not turn out to be the big villains I think we all were sort of hoping they would. And while there is definitely an argument to be made that that kind of sucks, I like the fact that this show p picked an idea for them and stuck to it. And I appreciate that. And it got to the conclusion it wanted to in its own way. So then, naturally, we see how everyone's affected. We see that Luke is still, two years later, genuinely being bothered. And again, I believe it. I really do. And so then naturally we see that, you know, Asuna now has long hair. Tiger got a haircut. I really like the tiger haircut. The way the other color at the end of her hair really shines more with the short haircut. And this is all solely for people who like looking at the girls, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, no. So then we, go, we find out that this is the day that Yuga is returning because the spaceship is about to land. And so I love how Gakudo, who's been typical, like, stiff follow the rules do everything right gakuro this whole time is the one who grabs the two of them puts them on the bike and just sends them going crazy to get to yuga in time because what was in the first episode gakuro got on the bike because he was afraid he'd get in trouble now he doesn't care he wants his friend back and i'm just grinning the whole time seeing how happy everyone is to be reunited and just how much it's changed and affected them that they were in each other's lives that was the point of this show and again like i said i'm glad that's what it stuck to when the dust settled you can spend all your time doing all these big philosophical debates or shock horror or anything like that platinum end but ultimately like if you want to be about character be about that character and that's what this ultimately was and then as they're all rushing back we see the spaceship coming we see yuga is wearing what looks like otis's mask but i do think it's kind of funny that the protagonist probably best known for being smirky ends with a smirk 
And so as he's going back, we see that Yuga's card goes from being seven roads to Yuga's ID card again. And the final shot is the dual discs be going back to rush duel mode as Yuga returns with rush duels, presumably here to stay. And that was Yu-Gi-Oh sevens. Obviously we will do like the best part, the best points, the worst points, uh, try and get some more go rush predictions and hopes in there. We'll try and rush through all this as they would say. But all in all, thank you for this journey. I genuinely loved this show. I know it wasn't for everybody, and a lot of the community dismissed it because we all like our cool edge boys like you say or Yusako. I mean, nobody likes Yusako, but you get my point. Uh, but for those of you who was willing to give this show a chance and give me a chance as I talked about it and gushed over it, thank you all very much. And let's hope we can continue to have fun talking about Go Rush, which again premieres in... Two days! Well, we'll work out a schedule. Don't worry that I will most likely screw up every week, like always. But yeah, no, time for the TCG question of the week. And just as we end, hopefully, with Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s, let us look hopefully forward to the future for real uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! So it was announced today that World sadly will not be happening. However, in this announcement, they also stated that there will be territorial championships aka nationals is still happening that will just be it and they will try to do other events going forward uh for irl and online which i think still means they might try and do like online worlds or something but they are at least making the effort to get us all back and with ycs charlotte around the corner a lot of people hyped uh regionals this past weekend were fucking huge trust me i was in a room with 656 fucking people do not do not smell anything in that room trust me everybody but yeah, my question for you is, do you think competitive using this plan will work out fine? Or are there things you would have hoped they had done differently? I personally am excited for things going forward. But give me your thoughts on that below. And as always, click to like, click to subscribe. And thank you, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens, for always just being such a fucking fun, entertaining show with some characters I'll never forget.